Five horror films featuring disabled characters. Horror doesn't exactly have the best reputation when it comes to representation of disabled people. While wheelchairs, facial scarring and other physical representations of disability have historically been synonymous with evil in horror, there are a few standout films which have taken a different approach in presenting their disabled characters. While most of the films on this list do still have flaws in their representation, they stand out for presenting more complex or innovative characters than disabled horror fans are used to seeing on screen. Number 5. Freaks With the title Freaks and the fact that the film dates back to 1932, Dracula director Todd Browning's film might not be progressive by today's standards. The film is set inside a freak show, the majority of actors being genuinely disabled or different in some manner. Reaction to the film was telling of the public's attitude to those with disabilities and visible differences. John C. Moffat wrote in the Kansas City Star, There is no excuse for this picture. It took a weak mind to produce it, and it takes a strong stomach to look at it. There is certainly an air of exhibitionism. 1930s audiences most likely experienced morbid curiosity, watching a man without limbs roll and smoke his own cigar. But for the era it came from, the casting of paid disabled actors was revolutionary. Subverting the stereotypes of disabled characters as sinister, the film's freaks are portrayed as the most morally sound characters of the film, the able-bodied performers being the true monsters of the story. Number 4. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre While Franklin isn't the most likable character in The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he is a developed part of the plot and as much a part of the core group of teenagers as the others. It might be jarring to hear him referred to as an invalid, but a modern viewer is likely to look at Franklin's treatment by his sister and friends with more distance than original viewers might have back when the film was released. Evoking pity because of a character's disability is not developed or progressive filmmaking. But our sympathy for Franklin is not evoked because he uses a wheelchair but because of the way he is treated by his supposed allies. Abandoned on the porch while the others enjoy the outdoors, seldom listened to or taken seriously, much of Franklin's more irritating traits obviously stem from frustration at his treatment. Whether intentional or not, the film shows us a character who, while in some ways vulnerable, is potentially capable of a great deal more than is expected of him. Number 3. American Mary American Mary is a body horror film created by the Soska sisters, focusing on a young medical student who becomes involved in the underground world of extreme body modification. As such, it presents several characters who suffer from body dysmorphic disorders and seek extreme solutions to their mental anguish. What's interesting about the film is that the characters have a varied range of triggers and issues surrounding their bodies, and are vastly different in how their dysmorphic thoughts manifest. This prevents the film from presenting a single, stereotypical narrative of the mental illnesses it explores. There is indication that one character seeks a more innocent body as a result of abuse. Beatrice is obsessed with a cartoon character as an image of beauty and femininity. The Soska sisters themselves play sisters with a deep, destructive fear of losing each other or being separated. American Mary was a fresh take on how horror can portray mental health conditions and a fascinating but not exploitative look at some of the extremes people go to in order to manage the symptoms of body dysmorphic disorders. Number 2. Bless the Child We covered Bless the Child in the Popcorn Horror magazine during the first Disability in Horror Month. Yes, the film isn't great, and those CGI rats are among the worst effects of that early 2000s CG boom. But praise has to be given to the way central character Cody is presented. Cody is a young autistic girl, being raised by her aunt, who is suddenly the subject of interest for a satanic cult, run by a charismatic televangelist type, who has married her biological mother in order to exploit her. 
Despite not being a very good horror film, Bless the Child is one of the best about an autistic child from a representation perspective. Her diagnosis isn't treated as a tragedy, but a part of who she is that her aunt accepts and loves fully. The film's plot could still exist as is if Cody was neurotypical. There isn't any subplot about finding a cure or how tragic her autism is for her guardians. Cody also displays a lot of agency for any child character, disabled or not. She believes in God, despite being raised by an atheist. Her actions drive the plot and her views matter. She isn't presented as a set of stereotypical symptoms. She openly displays autistic traits such as repeated speech patterns and stimming behavior, and this doesn't downplay her importance to the plot. Indeed, the film features a scene in which the aunt character corrects her biological mother, who asks what's wrong with Cody, saying that there is nothing wrong with her at all. She's just different. Number 1. A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 – Dream Warriors The third entry in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise sits somewhere between the terror of the first and the slapstick silliness of the later movies. The film is set inside a rehabilitation center for troubled teenagers and features characters including a young wheelchair user, a recovering drug addict, a girl experiencing suicidal thoughts, and a teenager who is unable to speak. Breaking the tradition of films set in asylums and mental health facilities, the patients are the heroes of the film who are able to utilize their unique experiences to fight Freddy in their dreams. The teenagers are perceived to be sharing a delusion of Freddy Krueger haunting them in their dreams, any deaths in the facility being written off as suicide or accidental. Interestingly, the movie hints at the need for a more accepting attitude to people who have experienced mental illness. Take Freddy out of the equation and it's a lesson in the value of listening and respecting those with neurological conditions, rather than dismissing and writing off their viewpoints. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this look at horror films featuring disabled characters. We have lots more Disability in Horror Month content over on our website at popcornhorror.com and you can follow us on social media, links in the description below. If you want to find out more about RJ Bailey, who voiced this video, visit rjbailey.com, RJ Bailey voice artist and sound design on Facebook, and talk to him at RJ Bailey on Twitter.